We're stopping by to check out water damage because there was a heavy heavy, heavy rain, rain last stuff. week. Yep. Which apparently took out the taken out. Yep, took out the entire driveway. <laughs> the driveway is up right in front of the truck. That's probably five or six feet deep right there. That's pretty crazy. To go pick up our six six by eight? Yeah, lumber. Twelve foot. Treehouse yokes. Yeah, treehouse yoke lumber. Um, so we're heading out of Barrington and headed that way. Master Builder, yeah, just kidding. Not say master. <laughs> He's not. He just wings it. Pretty much. Anyway, yeah. Feels like the surface of the sun out here. Oh, hi. It's impressive. <laughs> check, check. Picked up and oh, upside down the seat. What's the flag? I've had this treehouse hardware in my the back of my truck for probably I don't know two months now. Driving around, uh, I haven't opened it yet, so I finally got it in the shop. Uh, so we're gonna take take empty the boxes out and see what we've got. Uh, I ended up picking up four six by six uh, by eight foot posts tonight, along with two six by eight by twelve foot uh, PT posts. So we're gonna use all that stuff, all the lumber and all this hardware to build two yokes for our platform. The shop is an absolute mess right now, but then two seconds to clean it up. All this hardware is from uh, Nelson Treehouse, Treehouse Supplies. It's pretty heavy duty stuff. The standard limb kit for a yoke, a dynamic and static yoke. pieces we gotta we gotta bring my beams in and start uh, figuring those out and hopefully get all the joinery cut and then we can uh, start installing some of this hardware so I have my uh, four six by sixes two for each yoke and then two on the bottom that are my six by eights that'll be the beam across the top of the yoke they need to be offset in order to you know kind of maintain the center line or as close to the center line uh, for each for each strut so what i'm going to do is i'll find the center line of this beam uh, i'll cut a kerf on the right side of that center line for one one strut 
And then on the second strut down here, I'll do the same. Find the center line, cut a curve on the left side, uh, and that should that should satisfy this this little note in the bottom of the instructions. If you can cite each one of these six by sixes, the actually fairly straight. So I was gonna pick the better of two ends, but in this case, they're they're fairly straight. So I'm just gonna, like I said, square up this this end um, or each end, I guess. And then we'll uh, we'll cut the kerf that'll accept the knife plate and then move on to the next step. These knife plates are no joke. They're three eighths of an inch thick, so it's gonna be a fairly good sized kerf. All right, I was hoping to find my two foot square, but I couldn't find that, so I guess my speed square is gonna have to work. I'm gonna square it up and get some reference lines so we can trim this edge off. I'm just gonna see where the bottom of this, or the top of this knife plate is. Make a mark, so. Right there, there's a little weld on the joint, on the seam right here. Uh, not sure. Probably have to just clean that up with a chisel on this end, but I just wanna get the overall length and mark that, so that should be all set. All right, now I'm gonna set the width for the uh, for the knife plate, three eighths of an inch. So I was debating on how to cut this curve since it's, you know, needs to be five and a half inches deep and three eighths of an inch wide. I had a uh, two inch router bit that I thought about using, but still leave quite a bit of material left in the middle. Um, then I would need to build a guide to keep it straight. So I think what I'm gonna do is put it on to my bandsaw over there. I'll set up a, uh, a support on one end and see if I can get this thing squared up and just run it through. Just put a roller at that end and get it fairly level. If anything, it's a little, little higher than the uh, bandsaw table, but it lets me kind of slide it real easy. So I'll adjust the fence, the height, and uh, we'll get a few, we'll start cutting this thing. actually really well. I just cut on the inside of that line uh, to my stopping point there with a the little right here. I don't know if you can see it. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll cut on the other side and then uh, we'll just chop this thing out with a chisel. Well, looks good. Since this is such a wide curve I think I'm gonna just run another uh, cut up the middle. Thin this stuff out so it'll come out easier with the chisel. All right take it off the uh, uh, bandsaw bench. Just I didn't want to hammer on that thing. Uh, so I'm just going to take my chisel and get a little quarter inch chisel. Uh, and this mallet, geez, I made this, I don't know, a couple years ago, but it comes in really handy. So we'll, uh, let's see if we can chip this thing out of here. Now the next step is to drill uh, two holes that kind of align with the uh, with the hardware, and then we'll repeat this three more times, and then we'll help we'll have all our uh, struts done. Um, I'm just going to clean up the corners of these to accommodate the weld and the bracket. But I'm going to try to cut a little cham chamfer on each one of these corners, these inside corners with just a block plane. Uh, see if I can. Okay, I marked my right side as the top, so we'll reference that on each side so we're consistent. And since the weld kind of holds this up 
off the beam. I'm just going to raise it up. Um, I'm come down three quarters from the top and then just trace out my holes. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side, referencing from this side, and then we'll drill from each side. These aren't the easiest things to move, unfortunately. So now the tops on my left sides, we'll just measure over three quarters of an inch. Mark the holes. All right, so let's drill these out. Looks good. Some sort of reference, that's all you need. I just need to get down to the kerf, so almost there. Yeah, once you start it, it's going straight, it tends to stay straight. Spin this over and do the other side. Same thing, we'll just eyeball the center of the bit. Get all the garbage out of here. I'm drilling. A little snug, but I think this one was a little snug. I'll uh, almost push it in. Let me tap it in with a hammer and see what we did. Fortunately, I didn't take a head, so I didn't know I didn't have the bolts on hand, so I had to run out today and pick up some uh, grade eight bolts. That's the only thing I could find at the tractor supply quarter by eight inches long and they're not cheap I think these things are almost eight dollars a piece they do it with a pound so it's eight dollars I spent seventy five dollars in total for eight bolts eight nuts and 16 washes these shouldn't have to come off again so we should be good to tighten them up Seats in there fairly nice. Uh, I've got a washer on. Bolts. Let me flip it over and throw a washer and a nut on the other side and kind of tighten these up, tighten them up by hand. So I've got two struts done. Um, so the other one, you know, if we line the center line up, have the offset on the left, the two knife blades will touch here. And then that allows the two to two struts to be um, in line with each other. So they're not offset. So our beam can lay on top straight. So I think the next step is to take these out in the driveway, uh, set them up roughly where they're gonna be and start figuring out uh, the placement of our beam on top. All right, well, the, the offset worked great, but now in order to line these up, we need to trim probably an inch off each corner. Just gonna mark them from that. I get confused with what side is what. Pretty close. All right, so I took a measurement on this side of the tab. Seven feet. I made a mark. Did the same thing from this side all the way down to here. Seven feet. Okay, so at the seven foot mark right here, uh, we laid the beam across. Mason and I did. Laid it across the top. So it intersects over there at the seven foot mark over here. And I just transferred a line up at the two intersection points. Um, so now we'll take the beam inside and cut this joint out. 
here and then put it back on the two struts and then we can outline uh, where we need to cut the end of the strut to fit the joint. All right, those, that's the cut I need to make. Uh, right here, so it's, it's about an inch up, eight degree angle. Um, and the width of the uh, the six by six. All right, in order to get the eight degree angles, I just, if you can see it, this line transferred over onto the face so I could see it. And then I did the same thing down here. So what we'll do, put our square, so that's our 90 degree angle. And this side of the speed square has uh, degrees. We'll just bring it down to eight, degrees which is right there so now if we make a mark that's our eight degree angle on the left side the right side of the square at this intersection point right there and then as long as it's parallel to the eight degree line we just made the bottom of the square should be our eight degree angle there so this is the section we need to cut out All right, now I'm going to take my tracks on, cut this eight degree angle here, and then we'll do it again. Uh, I've got to mark it out, but we'll do it on the other end here. I think I'm just going to make a couple of score lines across here and then uh, chisel everything out. All right, let's see how this works. Unfortunately, I only have an inch chisel. Um, it'd be easier if I had a slick, I think, but I'll give this a try. See how far we can get. All right, so Mason and I brought the two struts out with the beam across and lined uh, the start of that cut with this line intersects, if that makes sense. So now we're just gonna trace this out and we'll cut that off and we'll do the same thing down here. There's our mark. I'm gonna take the beam, roll it towards me, transfer this line down there uh, and this one down. Probably cut this with the uh, track saw and then probably cut this one by hand. All right, we just dry fit everything together. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'll be in a minute. Um, looks pretty good. We still need to, I may or may not clean them up a little more, but I'm not going to film it. It's kind of boring. Uh, and then we need to drill two holes right here uh, for two long lag bolts that will go up inside into the beam to lock everything together. So that's it. That's the first yoke. Pretty much done. If you can see this Pika pencil, this thing is fantastic. It's got a built-in sharpener. <laughs> a really good point on there. See that thing? It works great, especially for marking wood like this. You don't have to worry about snapping the snapping the lead off. <laughs> 